What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create. And today guys, we are gonna be setting up the mechanical mixer, which is the second step in the relatively lengthy process of crafting the crushing wheels. Now, if you saw the first episode of the series, you would know that our first big goal is setting up the crushing wheels because those are what allow us to process ore. And in modded Minecraft, as I'm sure most of you know, one of the most important things to get going early is an ore processing setup of some kind that's offered by you know a variety of different mods because that is going to allow you to save a ton of time when it comes to mining, since you need a ton of ore when you're working in modded Minecraft. Pretty much everything requires some kind of ingot when you're crafting with it. So getting the most out of them is gonna save you a ton of time and just feel really nice. So unfortunately with this mod, uh, it's not as simple as most mods, since we have so many prerequisite machines that we have to set up to actually get to the crushing wheels themselves, to even be able to craft them, not to be having them working or anything like that, just to be able to craft them. There's so much we have to do, and once we get it done, they're actually not as rewarding as pretty much every other mods or processing setup. The nice thing though is they look absolutely awesome. So I know that's a, a huge thing for a lot of people, including myself, so I'm really excited to get these guys running in the base, but we're still working our way to it. So the reason that it's gonna take so long to get this is because we can look at the recipe right here, it's nothing too bad. Andesite alloy, sticks, some stone, you know, whatever kind you want, and andesite casing, not too bad. Unfortunately, the bad part comes in when you look at the crafting grid. If that wasn't a dead giveaway as to something being a little bit weird, it's not a two by two, it's not a three by three, it is some weird shape. And that comes from having four mechanical crafters in a square that are used to actually craft this. And so we need to be able to make mechanical crafters. And that poses two different issues, which is why we will have made two prerequisite machines between this episode and the last. And that's that we need sheets, of course, which is what the mechanical press that we made last episode is going to allow us to make. But then we also need brass, brass for the sheets, brass for the casing. And to make brass, it's, you know, it's not too bad. Look at all these recipes we have right here to make brass ingots. There's so many different ones. But you might notice that all the ones I'm clicking through right now, the prerequisite for, you know, making it is having brass. So that really doesn't do us much good. Brass nuggets, crushed brass. Clearly we don't have brass, so there is one recipe that we can work with that does not require you to have brass already to make the brass ingot. And that is using, you guessed it, the mechanical mixer. So to make the brass, we need zinc, copper, and blaze powder. And to make the mechanical mixer, you are going to require nether quartz, which means that you're gonna have to set up multiple machines, take a trip to the nether, find nether quartz, fight the fight blaze, which traditionally is gonna take you a little bit of walking around to find. Um, so all in all, it takes a fair bit of time to be able to set this up, but we should have everything ready to go for today's episode. So before we jump into that, there are a couple things that I wanna talk about. We're gonna sleep real quick before we go outside though, because I don't wanna start off the series by dying. Um, but you may notice things look a little bit different here. And that is because in the comments on the first episode, you guys said that because this is such a really cool looking mod, it's so aesthetically pleasing that we should have a base that is appropriate to put this stuff in because we want everything to look cool and so I decided that rather than go out and make a big square factory somewhere um, or you know dig a little area underground, we were going to expand upon the current villager house we were living in, keep the same style, and this is what we are left with. I you know put some nice little shrubbery around and all that stuff, um, but I think it turned out really, really nice. And so it's continuing sort of with the uh, heavily wood themed house, which is awesome because a lot of the stuff that we're working with does look like it's made of wood, which is great. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is more of a technical aspect. It's right here. And this is six water wheels all in a row. Now it's important because we talked about the water wheel last episode. This is what is generating our rotational power right now. But the important thing to note is that adding more water wheels on, they're all transferring the rotational energy inside right now. They're all connected but they are not adding to the amount of RPM that we are getting. We're currently getting 15. If we had one water wheel, we'd be getting 15 also. What they are adding to though is known as stress capacity. And if we hover over the water wheel, you can see that they add a small amount of stress capacity. And the reason this is important is because of how setups work in Create. And that is generators are going to add stress capacity. Machines that use the rotational energy you generate are going to add stress. 
And the stress capacity always needs to be higher than the stress of a system. If it goes over it, you are going to have machines stop working. It'll basically notify you by flashing red and things are gonna stop working. Nothing breaks, nothing blows up, nothing horrible happens, but they're just gonna stop working. So yes, it's very easy to troubleshoot, but you really want a high stress capacity system because then you can add more machines to it. And early on, an easy way to do that is putting a ton of water wheels in a row. So still going at 15 RPM, but we have a fair bit of stress capacity here, which means we have the freedom to add a lot of machines onto it. And like I said, we are pulling that rotational power into the base right now. There's a gearbox down here that is turning it and then turning it up again. And this is an encased shaft. So everything looks nice and clean over here that we can work with and we're all good to go. Now, I've crafted all the things for today's episode, mainly because I've already recorded this once and I forgot to actually hit the record button, which has been happening to me way more frequently than I would like to admit, but we're going to go back through everything because it is pretty cool stuff to set up and uh, actually it's really awesome. So we're going to grab out the mechanical press, which of course we got rid of because we did remodeling of the base. We're going to grab out the basin and the mechanical mixer. Now the mechanical mixer, we already sort of went over the recipe, but it requires cog wheels, andesite casing, which is easy, a whisk, which requires some iron sheets and andesite alloy, nothing too crazy. But I did say that you had to go to the nether for this and that's for the electron tube. And to make that you need polished rose quartz, redstone torch and an iron nugget. The part of this that requires you to go to the nether is the polished rose quartz. And that is because you make sandpaper, which is a rough paper that can be used to polish material or sharpen your tools and you're going to use that on rose quartz, which is nether quartz with redstone. So uh, that's why you need to take a trip to the nether, but that is how you're going to craft the mechanical mixer. And then if we hold shift on this, you can see it is a kinetic whisk for applying any shapeless crafting recipe to items beneath it. It requires constant rotational force and a basin placed below with a gap in between. And you can see it has a stress impact that is moderate. So uh, for that, I believe we would actually need two water wheels to actually have it functioning in our setup. Um, but then it says when above a basin, it starts to mix items in the basin whenever all necessary ingredients are present. And an important thing is that when used with a wrench, it configures the minimum amount of total ingredients for the applied recipes. And you use this option to rule out unwanted recipes with similar but less ingredients. So. The reason that that's important is because we'll go over today, if you were to throw in the first ingredient of the three that we need to make brass, it would actually start processing it down into something different before we could even get the rest of the ingredients in. So using the wrench on this is very important. And to make the wrench, which we already have, it's three gold sheets, a cog wheel, and a stick. So nothing too expensive. Now to make the basin, which needs to go below it, it is five andesite alloy. And if we hold shift on this, it's just a handy item container used in processing with the mechanical mixer and mechanical press. Now with the mechanical mixer, it is mandatory. It's gonna go right below it. So if the mechanical mixer was here with this glass is, the basin goes right below it. Now there is gonna be a little bit of a gap between, actually I think it might go, it's, it's gonna be I think three high, but um, regardless, there's gonna be a gap in between um, the mechanical mixer itself and the basin, but in between that is still gonna look like the mechanical mixer is there because that's where the whisk is. The whisk lowers down into the basin, mixes everything up and then retracts back up into the mechanical mixer. So it looks really cool, but don't be confused if the whisk is not actually in the basin when you start. You need to have the rotational power uh, and the ingredients in before it actually will dip down into the uh, basin itself. So we're gonna grab out shafts, gearboxes, large cog wheels, regular cog wheels, the wrench and the lever and that's because when we set all these up today, we'll be able to set up the mechanical press really easy. Uh, but when we set up the mechanical mixer, we actually need to increase the RPM of our system. And so we're gonna go over how you do that using cog wheels, which is pretty darn awesome. So if we come over here, we're gonna need to bring up this rotational power a little bit. So we'll bring it up one and we wanna set up the mechanical press right here at this window. So if we put down the mechanical press right here, we actually need to rotate it. Perfect time to try and use the wrench because I'm not sure how you rotate stuff. I guess you just right click on the face you wanna rotate. Um, but then we put the gearbox down and that is not the correct gearbox. We want the other one because we need to go like that. So now it's spinning. So we got the gearbox there. It's putting the rotational power in here. We've already set this up last episode. It's nothing crazy. Put the lever down and if we flip it, there we go. Music to my ears. So this is set up. Now the really cool thing about all the different machines in the create mod is they transfer rotational power through them. 
It is not like most machines and other mods where you wire power to it, and then you have to wire power branching off the current wired power to get to the next machine. These, you can set them up in succession one after another, because you can see this is turning right here. The rotational power is going straight through it. So what we need to do next is start applying the cog wheels to increase the RPM. To use the mechanical mixer, you're gonna need 30 RPM. And right now, like I said, the water wheels are only spinning at 15. They've got a higher stress capacity in them, but not a higher RPM, they're at their max right now. So what we can do is we're gonna take out the cog wheels, and I guess we'll keep all this in here, and the gearboxes, and we are going to want to put this gearbox down right here. And what we're gonna do is, actually I think we wanna put a shaft down and then a gearbox because we need some room here. And that's because the first one we're gonna put down is the large cog wheel. Now, the way it works is large cog wheels need to go next to small cog wheels and vice versa. You cannot put a large next to a large or a small next to a small. The teeth will not connect and that's how the cog wheels work is the teeth connect and it causes the other one to spin. Now, the large to a small cogwheel will increase the rotational speed by a factor of two. So we will go from the 15 we have currently to the required 30 in one setup. If you go from a small to a large, it cuts it in half. So we would be going down to 7.5. So what we wanna do now is we're gonna throw down, I think we need some block behind this so we can actually put it down. We don't need to leave it there, but we wanna put down the small cogwheel so we're gonna put it down up here and we can get rid of this block down here, grab that. And you can see now it's clipping a little bit with the wall, but it's fine, it still rotates. The teeth connect between these two and it's making this small cog wheel spin, which honestly looks awesome, but this is spinning at 30 RPM now. So we've increased the speed by a factor of two. If we wanted to further increase the speed, what we would do is we would take a large cog wheel and we would put it down here. Obviously this is a small one, but we would put a large here if we had the room in, in our inventory. And then we would do this again, and again, and again, and again, where you would do the large to a small, come forward with the large, then go to a small, come forward with the large, go to a small. It doesn't need to go vertical. You can go you know, however you want with it, but that's how you are going to increase rotational speed up to you know, 10 times increased. Um, but this is at the rotational speed that we need today. And I'm sorry if that was too quick of a lesson. I can go over that in a different video. But what we need to do now is actually set up the mechanical mixer. And what we can do is set up a gearbox to start transitioning this because we are in the horizontal plane right now with our rotation. Um, and what I mean by that is, yeah, the, the, um, the shafts are in a horizontal plane with how they're rotating. And what we need, if you look at the mechanical mixer right here, it is not the same rotational input that you have for the mechanical press. It is a cog wheel. And so what we need is a small cog wheel put directly next to it like this so the teeth connect. And so we need the shaft to be vertical that the power is coming in from. And so what we can do is put a gearbox right over here like so, and then we'll move this over one. So we're gonna put the cog wheel down here, and then we are going to put the basin right down here in the ground, like that. And then we are going to put the mechanical mixer right here. And you can see that the teeth connect and the rotational power is being transferred here, which is absolutely awesome looking. Now this is going at 30 RPM, which means it's able to function. And what we can do is grab out our wrench and adjust the settings on this. So when something is configurable, when you look at it with the wrench, you are going to get a, a pop-up like this almost, and it says minimum ingredients and it says scroll. So you use your scroll wheel to adjust up and down the minimum ingredients. And for our recipe for brass, we want three. If we were to throw the zinc in there with it at a minimum of one, it would start processing and it would give us zinc nuggets, even if we got all the other ingredients in before it finished. So the minimum's at three now, which means we are good to go. So if we come over here and we pick out our copper, we pick out our, where's our zinc? Our zinc and, oh my gosh, I ran out of blaze powder. Oh my gosh. Oh, see, because I recorded this video once already, I used up all my blaze powder before I realized the problem was I recorded the video and I didn't realize I forgot to record the video itself. I only recorded the audio and I used up all of it and I made bronze, but I threw the bronze out or the brass. I threw the brass out because I wanted to do it over again. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll demonstrate this without making the brass and I'll have to go get more blaze rods later, I guess. So if you leave it at one, if we were to come down here and we were to throw in a zinc bar and throw it in down here, it would go in there, it gets caught, and then this drops down, starts spinning, and then we right click with an empty hand and we have zinc nuggets and it's done. So we don't have to use a lever or anything for this. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make the brass for you guys. I also keep calling it bronze, I don't know why. Um, I couldn't make it brass for you guys because we ran out of the blaze powder. I knew I shouldn't have tossed all 10 in in the first time I tried to record this. Um, but this is all set up. I think it looks absolutely awesome. Um, now I'm sure you guys have better suggestions on how to actually make this setup right here more compact, more efficient, whatever it may be. So if you have those suggestions, feel free to post them in the comments and I will be sure to look into them or any suggestions of making the house look even cooler, expanding upon it, anything like that. But I believe next episode we will be making and working with the mechanical crafters. And then after that, we will have the crushing wheels to set up, which is awesome. But I think that's gonna be it for today, guys. As always, I will say that I hope you are staying healthy during all of this and taking care of yourselves and being safe. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I'll talk to you guys later.